Summit in Berlin 2014, and with me is Misha Dola, Professor in Wireless Communication at King's College London. Misha, what is 5G? Is it really just uh, the next step in the development of mobile technology, or is it really a paradigm change? I think 5G will have two components. It will have the evolutionary component, which is the business as usual, uh, 10 times, 100 times, 1,000 times more capacity, a little bit of reduction and delay, uh, more devices, etc., what we have been driving since 2G. But there will also be a revolutionary component, and uh, that may actually relate how we design the whole system. So we may end up with a total change in architecture design, which allows us to meet some of the more technical challenges like the millisecond delay, etc., but it's just a side product. What I feel will be the, the biggest advantage of doing it is, is to break up a little bit this very clunky infrastructure and allow innovation to be done within that ecosystem, right? So we want the same type of uh, you know entrepreneurship and innovation like it happened in the internet space. You would love to have, uh, for the same amount of internet companies, telecom companies, which we can't do, do today because of how the whole infrastructure is designed. So that would be a dream uh, on our side to do that. How difficult that is, we don't know yet. And then we understand also it's a very complex space. Um, so there's a reason why we have the titans in the field like uh, the Vodafones, the Ericsson's, the Huawei's, etc. But uh, there's also an opportunity to do that. You see, the, in the internet that happens, so why not in the telecom space? Speaking of the internet, uh, what is that internet of things and why does it matter? So the Internet of Things is a little bit an old hat for us, I have to say. So it is the, the third Internet, we call that, right? So we had the first Internet as a fixed Internet, connecting computers. The second one's a mobile Internet, connecting mobile phones and tablets and laptops. And we have been designing that Internet. Now the third Internet is the Internet of Things, where we start to connect objects, actuators, small sensors, etc. And uh, we feel it's a little bit, you know, from an academic forward-looking point of view, why that is a bit of an old hat, because we've been doing this for 15 years, right? So uh, we're all very excited that that finally happened. I built a 50 million uh, euro business around this. We are pioneers in the Internet of Things with my company, World Sensing. But now we need to look forward, and we feel that that tactile Internet is like literally the fourth generation of Internet, where we're not transmitting information, but we're actually transmitting skills, which is very different. So, speaking of changing uh, the environment, uh, one of those catchwords that uh, we hear very often these days is the smart city. What is, or what, what kind of infrastructure do we need to actually build a smart city? Smart city is an interesting development. So it's, it's again, one of those buzzwords. And uh, you, you, as a citizen, I'm not sure you really feel a big difference from 10 years ago. Um, having said that, uh, the, the, the problems we're facing in smart cities is that we have very strong smart players. OK, so the Vodafones, the Cisco's, the IBM's, all titans and giants on their own right. And we have the city players, right? We have the NSL's, the Swarco's, which you have never heard of. But uh, my company has dealt with a lot because we're in that space. They're the ones who uh, put the parking machines, they draw the lines of the parking, they put the electricity cables, etc. Uh, they're titans on their own. So we have essentially these two big infrastructure games coming together, the digital agenda with the actual city infrastructure agenda. And that will take time. That will take time, that takes money. You need to innovate a lot on that. As a young company, it's difficult to innovate because the cash flows uh, problems come in very quickly because sales cycles are long, etc. So currently, smart cities, as we understand it, conceptually, means putting out a lot of sensors, putting out a lot of digital infrastructure, trying to bring a lot of real-time information into the city, which would help, essentially, the city to optimize things. And would also the citizens to uh, help uh, drawing decisions in real time, one where, which route they take, etc. So there are loads of opportunities there. But of course, we understand now it's a bigger picture. So I'm part of the ISO working group on smart cities. So it's not only technology, you see, it's also architecture. Where do you, how do you build parks, etc. How do you interact with, you know, the human space technology, the nature, etc. Um, the human component, the social component. So it's all coming together. But of course, the, the digital layers and enabling infrastructure for the whole smart cities uh, ecosystem. So finally, uh, if you had one wish free for bringing Europe up to speed when it comes to digitizing, uh, what would that be? 
Yes, so I, I would love essentially to get so much more entrepreneurship out there. So make it very easy. Build a, a European platform, really, a, a maybe uniform, uh, unified, I'm not sure that's possible, platform for entrepreneurship. And I built a company from scratch. Uh, it was a very bleeding experience. It was a very rewarding experience, right? So people say building a company is a bit like jumping off the cliff and, uh, and, uh, and essentially assembling the airplane on the way down. And often you don't even have instructions for doing that. Mm -hmm. So if we had something which would be more helpful there. And it's not only, you see, to actually have platforms to create companies is actually an easy thing to do. It's very easy to create a company, but it's very difficult to make that company survive for one year, two years, three years, right? So I had to pay my 50 people salary over a long period of time, we had no sales, even though we knew that that's gonna be a very beautiful sales story, IoT, smart cities, et cetera. So if Europe could help with some budgets, essentially, could funds who could actually bridge that sales cycles, uh, provide the platform for companies to innovate, make it easier, less regulations to essentially uh, see Europe literally as a single market, a bit like the U U US companies out of Silicon Valley would see the US as a single market. We'd love to have the same, no matter whether you're in Slovenia and Poland and the United Kingdom and France. Um, you know, if you reach to that level, then I think Europe will be very, very powerful, digitally speaking. That's a wonderful last word, Michelle Dola. Thank you very much. Thank you.